Welcome back to the Head, Heart, and Boots podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Brandon. Join us as we wrestle with what it takes to transform ourselves and the businesses we lead. Oh, what would you think? I know, it was kind of serious. Should we laugh? <laughs> Christopher. Yes. Christopher Nordyck. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Chris. Uh-huh. Brother. Yeah. Oh, you know what? You were going to talk to me about something with matthew mcconaughey oh, what was that well i don't know like you were saying something and I, I i pulled out the old all right all right all right oh yes that's <laughs> that's where we were going mcconaughey and i asked you if you'd seen his tv show because i was totally spacing it with my 42 year old brain um <laughs> that would, that's, it's called true detective you seriously have not seen that true detective no you're a mcconaughey fan i, I know but i wouldn't even mr green light too i know that was a, that was a stupid was a great, good book by the way great book yeah, yeah. I, like, I feel like Matthew McConaughey falls into the category of love or hate. Like I talked to some people about it and they're like, oh yeah, he's the best. And then I talked to other people. He's a dirt bag. Really? Yeah. I don't I, know what, I think the dirt bag thing is kind of a miss. I think you need to get rid of those friends. I know. Right. Like yeah. I'm, I'm shrinking thinks, my circle. Who thinks McConaughey is a dirt bag? Jeez Louise. Yeah. I think they, I think maybe they're associating his real life with some of the characters he's had. Cause he's had some. Let's put it this way. He's had a few characters. I wouldn't want that persona to be introduced to my daughter. Nah. That's, that's probably <laughs> a fast a, times at Ridgemont high. Huh? Yeah. That's a, yeah. That's so, a, uh, anyway, it, it's true. Detective is an incredible, it, he was the first, I think he was the first season. So they, they cycle through these lead characters. So it was, if I recall correctly, it was, uh, McConaughey in was it Woody Harrelson? Or Woody Harrelson was in a second season. Anyway, the true detective fans are going to comment on our. Yeah, they'll know. Comment. But anyway, uh, it, it's Never incredible. Even. You have to, yeah, true detective. You have to check it out. It's, uh, it's okay. by HBO. But um, right. I'll check it out. Jody Foster is starring in season four of True Detective, which Ooh. is going to be bonkers. Jody, so Foster. there we go. So is this a, is this real? Or this is like a series. It's it's, like it's a, a series, it's like a thriller like drama. A drama. Yeah, okay. crime, crime drama. It's, gotcha. it's amazing. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Okay, dude. So it is June sixteenth is the date that we're recording this yeah. particular show. Probably won't come out for a couple weeks, but either way, it's gonna put us in that June, maybe first week yeah. of July time frame. And here's here was what was on my mind today when I woke up. Mm. It's midway through the push it's midway through the year right yeah and i know if it like in our business <clears throat> it's a mixed bag right yeah. there's elements where we go holy cow we are way further along than where we thought you know yeah. we're excited we're motivated by certain aspects of our business and then there's other parts of our business that we're a little frustrated with or, sure. or maybe not quite hitting the mark that we wanted to yeah. and i thought to myself okay just like, like this must be a scenario that most of our listeners are in where they've established goals for 2022 yep. and there's parts of those goals that maybe they're just destroying. And then there's other parts of their business that they certainly are, are, are seeing and saying, yeah, it's a miss. I'm, I'm not where I want to be. Sure. So I wanted to tackle that a little mm. bit today. I think I think my goal for it, for the most part, is a pep talk. <laughs> I was right? going to say, is this for our self help or yes. the benefit of others? Yes, this is this uh, is self help, and if it's helpful for somebody listening, awesome. But yeah, I need yeah, a. Sure. I, it's like an internal pep talk. Yeah, uh, it's our podcast. We can do whatever we want. With <laughs> that's it. right. That maybe some folks can can relate to. So yeah. my thought mm -hmm. was with this. There's, there's kind of a couple camps, right? Mm -hmm. Again, kind of like ours, it's kind of a mix in the same business. But I think some businesses probably have had a, a hell of a year that, sure. that it's amazing. And I think others are frustrated. And so kind of my, where my thought went is for those that have just been kicking ass and taking names mm -hmm. and, and like it's nothing but hope and, and momentum, yeah. there's a chance that in order to achieve that level of success, mm -hmm. you said this that maybe we've ignored some things that may dif make it difficult to go six more months yeah. at that rate. And so we just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about like, Hey, pace yourself. What are some things you can be weary of or aware yeah. of to make sure you can go all year. Right. Yeah, and not right. burn out by September or something. Yeah. And then for those of us, no, for those <laughs> it might be us from time to time that are in this camp of they're frustrated. They're not where they want to be. Yeah. I, I would say there's actually, opportunity still, right? We've got a whole half of a year. So yeah, anyway. dude. And I, and I think if anything, 
you and I probably in our career, and I think probably some of our listeners can relate to this too, is, is that you're always in this not quite happy with your results. Like even when you're hit, it's like, I, I think in general, we have this somewhat positive discontent, not always positive discontent yeah. of just like, I, I think a lot of us, right, are just wired as hard chargers where it's like you, you take this one hill and then you see the mountain beyond. You're like, all right, that's the next one up. Yeah. And it's like, there is, you're always in this state of sort of semi-disappointment that you feel like, okay, that could have been better. We could do more. We could, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, all right. So where do you want to hang first? Uh, you know, let's, um, let, let's talk about for those people that are, they're having a bang out year, like okay. as a breakout year, yeah. cause, cause you know, uh, some of our clients are in this camp and, and certainly we have colleagues and folks we've been talking to that are just, wow, growth is really taken off in certain areas. Yeah. You know, one of the, one of the analogies that came to my mind is I was thinking about this earlier when you brought it up, I think, I don't know, yesterday we started talking about this, um, is this whole financial principle of rebalancing your investments. Hmm. You know, so uh, I, I used to be a registered investment advisor. Um, I should correct that. I was a, a registered rep. Um, I used to sell 401ks and IRAs and stuff like that when I was a state farm agent. And one of the principles we learned is that part of being a smart investor is um, occasionally taking your profits off the table on one investment and reinvesting that in a different um, asset class, right? So you made a whole bunch of money on these stocks, but you can let it ride or you can peel some of those profits off and reinvest it into other stocks that are down, right? And allow them to appreciate. It's good rebalancing your accounts. And I think that's a principle, right? We can use in our business, yeah. right? Where things are going really awesome. Okay, the chances are you have some underperforming stocks in your portfolio as well. Yeah. Right. And so peeling off some of those profits, some of that win and transferring that energy, right. To other classes of our business, so to speak, um, is usually really important. Like you and I've seen that when we've had runaway growth, nearly 100% of the time, there's some unhealth that's created in that Sure, because of just like the adapt and overcome, you know, um, mindset that you get in as the, the work's coming in and you're nearly always understaffed yeah. to one degree or another, Yeah, right? As you're growing fast. And so it's like, whether it's storm activity or it's just a, um, an underserved market that you tap into that just creates a ton of growth, chances are you have some um, under-resourced areas of your business. It yeah. could be uh, a process that's breaking down under the stress of, of the greater work, or it, it very well could be morale. We've been yeah. running our people too hard. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been, we've been overclocking our, our uh, production teams. Um, but anyway, I just, I just, that, that principle came back to me from way back in my state farm days of this idea of, of rebalancing the accounts mm -hmm. because it's so easy. Like growth is exciting for everybody until it's not. Like until your PMs are all handling 25 files and there's no, you know, job coordinator and there's, there's no admin support and everybody's just grinding till eight, 9 PM at night, trying to keep the wheels on. Um, but there can be a temptation, I think as senior leadership to just keep the pedal down. Like, Hey, we got to make hay while the sun's out and yeah. let's, you know? Yeah. And, and so I think that principle of wait, we got to make sure we shore up our base too. Like, yeah. Oh, we got to, we, we have to catch our systems up to this level of growth. Yeah. So I imagine there may be some people here that are in that position where it's like, okay, things have been really good mostly, but we're aware of some things that are, are not so good and maybe getting worse. Yeah. No, I think you're right on point. And I think this is a great time of the year for us to do an assessment, right? So some folks listening are, are really diligent in creating performance right at the end of their previous year. And they're really doing a great job of comparing their current financials to this performa. Um, this is that time of year, even from that perspective, like if you're a bit more sophisticated and that's how you're running your operation, great job. Um, and if that's the shoes that you're in, this is that time of year for us to really look at that and say, you know, again, kind of staying in this things are really going well camp. Um, we're doing great. We're killing the numbers. We're way ahead of the power curve in terms of where our performance said, 
okay, great. Well, what are we going to do with those resources, with those financials, with the, the excess, right? Yeah. Um, that, that we've created. And is there a strategy? Is there an area of our business that we can invest in? I think this is a perfect time of year to do exactly what you're talking about yeah. and, and really do it from a, a bit of a critical eye. Mm. Um, you know, I think, I think I would encourage like you and I are in this state right now. We're, we're literally doing similar things. I mean, our, our morning coffee walks have been really uh, uh, focused on yeah, reevaluating yeah, what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. So I think, you know, some additional areas uh, like that we would, would suggest that folks are taking a look at is, is production manpower, right? Man, woman power. Where are we at? Um, do we have something that's sustainable or not? Mm -hmm. And if it's not sustainable, then what can we do to invest energy and focus and, and prioritize initiatives then that will bring those pieces of the business in line? Because again, what you're looking for here is, is yeah. it's exciting to grow, but, but what we want to encourage people to stop getting stuck in is this cycle of, I grow and break all my systems. Mm. I fix them. I grow again and break all my systems. I try to fix them. You and I experienced that multiple oh, yeah. times. There is a way, however, to, mm. to prioritize growth and sustainability at the same time. You, right? know what the, you know what that reminds me of, man? I think we were at Global Leadership Summit one year, and I don't remember who the figure was. It was probably like Patrick Lencioni or you know Jim Collins or one of those sort of management guru guys. But I remember them saying that the number one role of a leader, and I think you're kind of speaking to the owner or the senior leader, yeah. is building their team's capacity. Mm. Like there, and capacity is, is really a holistic term. It's like, it's building their professional ability, right? Yeah. And their, their, their own sort of, it, there's a skill uh, component to that. But then there's also just the capacity in terms of financial resources, staffing levels, systems, technology, mm -hmm. right? That that's our number one job as senior leaders is always building the capacity of the team around us. Yeah. How do we level up and prepare to do this level of business profitably moving forward? So now we have this whole new watermark when now we're doing these many jobs per month. Whoa, this is great. The money's flowing in the EBITDA is strong, but what needs to happen for us to be prepared to do this now forever and yeah. more, you yeah. know? Yeah. I think another thing that we see kind of in the same category is folks that, that reach a certain capacity, current capacity, they're really focused on reputation and quality, which is awesome. Um, and then you find them unwilling or afraid to continue to pursue new relationships, mm. right? They start not being as aggressive in follow-up. Maybe they defer a meeting for a few more weeks. Yeah. They, they inadvertently may be doing some things that actually could have a long-term negative impact on their business, mm. but it's because of the current state that they're in, they're not thinking about that far ahead, Yeah. right? We're, we're not really thinking about Q1 of 2023. Yeah. We're just thinking about right now. And so again, I think, I think this still falls into that same category of in the areas that you're doing really well, let's celebrate, let's get excited with the team. Guys, you are kicking butt. And right, there's these things that as a team, we need to make sure that we shore up yeah. so that we create a new level of competency and success in our business, not a cycle yeah. of success. Um, in our business. So anyways, I think that that's an area and that's challenging, right? Because mm -hmm. people for the right reasons are concerned. Well, if I keep bringing in new work and I can't respond to it appropriately, mm -hmm. then we could fail. We could fall down. So I guess the answer may be there or the suggestion, I wouldn't call it an answer, but the suggestion is, okay, strategically, don't get so wrapped up in going out to doing the next job that we forget as leaders. It's our job to think through capacity. Mm. How do I take on more work competently so I can continue to have my staff selling, continue to develop new relationships? And that's not always an easy answer, especially right now with, yeah. with hiring issues and, and struggles, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean that that's not a necessary part of your business to prioritize. Yeah. <clears throat> 
and you know, as we talk about this, I'm reflecting on some of our, I mean, you and I've been through several really big growth seasons, you know, and I think some of them we've handled better than others, you know, with more wisdom. Um, and I think a, of a flaw that, that we succumb to was when it's, when it's going really good as leadership, you can become the most disconnected from what's happening in the field because mm-hmm. you're in this mode of capacity building and you're dealing with the hiring, you know, uh, shortages, you're, you're dealing with increased labor cost. You're dealing with all the things that come with the growth, right? Maybe it's also, you're having meetings with the bank, you're getting financing in place and all that kind of stuff. You're buying vehicles, you're doing all the things, um, that you can lose track of where morale is at. Mm. And especially, I think you were such, you were so good at sort of building this, esprit de corps like there there was this we had a high level we, we had a high capacity for um take adapt and overcome in our business yeah and i think the the thing that was a lesson for me is you can have this like really powerful esprit de corps where you can call in anybody and it's like you got it boss you know it's just that can do attitude across the team yeah to where people when that, when it starts to break down, people are hesitant to say so. Right. Right. When they hit legitimate yeah. stalls in their ability, yeah. capacity, bandwidth. whether it's mental health, right. Or it's yeah. just physical fatigue. It's all the things yeah. we know this stuff happens. Yep. And, and so that, that culture, that high power culture can bite you yeah. because people don't feel sometimes safe to say, boss, I'm like, uh, my marriage. Like I haven't seen my wife for four nights in a row. She's like, I haven't been for, you know, that kind of stuff. Like, like I, my, my home life is suffering because of the load, the the pressure, the, the timelines and everything else. They're hesitant to bring that up. And we've, we've had a couple seasons like that where we realized that we probably held the pedal down too long without taking that into account. Yeah. You know? And so, you know, for those of you that have been winning hard so far this year, that's a good thing to reflect on as an owner. Yep. And, and it's like, how do you get in touch with that? Well, certainly just by asking. Yeah. Like, and, and I think it, it also, I think you and I've discovered you have to be really deliberate about building that feedback environment. Yeah. You know, it's like, it, we can't, it, it's easy when we're like developing this go, 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 adapt and overcome culture for us to, um, forget to also build in the culture of, uh, health sustainability. Hey, this is a marathon, not a sprint. Sometimes yeah. we forget that we don't bundle that language in with it. Yeah. Um, and so asking people, Hey, how you doing? No, really? You know, yeah. how, you know, have you been having dinner with your family? Like are you get in time to manage your life and you know what I mean? Asking oh, yeah. those kind of questions. Yeah. Because there's probably a piece in us that doesn't want to know. <laughs> it's right. Right. We don't want to be responsible yeah. for it. We don't want to slow down. Yeah. Right. We don't, we don't want to have to push pause or do anything that's going to slow down momentum. Uh, when we feel like we're just firing on all cylinders and making progress. So again, this is not a negative in any way. No, like no. I think people need to be just absolutely on fire uh, if if they're experiencing a ton of growth and gains and momentum. And growth doesn't necessarily mean top line. Sure. I mean, at the end of the day, it's about how much you keep. Oh man. Uh, and that's been a challenge. I mean, I I as a leader have really challenged with that, where where I was just prioritizing top line, and I needed to learn to be a better steward and keep more at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of company owners, a lot of business owners, it's like exciting to to tell somebody what your top line revenue is. Yeah. But if you get honest about where the bottom line is, yeah. where that EBITDA is, it's not so sexy. Yeah, we right? so easily right in our chats at association events and networking things is like, yeah, you know, we're, we did 20 mil last year and it's like, yeah, but how much, yeah. What was your EBITDA? Five. Yeah. We don't talk it. We don't, we don't sling around. What was your EBITDA this past year? Right. Yeah. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I mean, that's a health number. Right. And so anyways, where I was going with that. Yeah. What's your turnover? What's your EBITDA? Right. What are the, yeah. yeah. What are, what are these business stats that, that really point the, you know, towards whether or not this is sustainable and have you grown to a point where this is a new operational uh, capacity, Yeah, you know, versus a a flash in the pan. So anyways, kudos to you guys. If you're in this zone and you're just motivated and pumped up because your business is, is just firing on all cylinders, 
great job. Continue to be excited. Those are great assessment times. Like, yeah. you know, if you're evaluating some of the areas that you need to continue to make progress in to keep up with the growth, those are great problems. So be motivated by them. Yeah. But, but as a reminder, don't stop looking yeah. because things look good on the top line. And, and I just, I think it's so important because we have so many models inside and outside of our industry to look to is that there, there also is a cautionary element of too, is when we're sprinting like that, we're in the midst of a big sprint is that long-term that's not how we win. Mm-hmm. Like, like Jim Collins, uh, in his book, uh, uh, good to great, I think. Right. Yeah. He talks about how the most legendary, uh, enduring, great companies of our time, they, they led what he called the 20 mile March. Yes. Like it's, it's, it's more of a plodding behavior. Yep. One foot in front of the other. We don't skip a step. We don't miss a step. It's just one foot in front of the other. It's like, we're going for first downs here. Yes. We're not going for a touchdown every play, you yeah. know, consistency compounds. And I, and I like right. that because, and I think where you and I see that, um, it, what can become an error when you just have the pedal down and it's all growth is, um, we start to get loose with our battle rhythms. Yes. Yep. You know, production meetings, the work's coming in. Weeks. Oh guys, we can't do our production meeting this week, but we'll catch up next week. Yes. And then next week, the production, production meeting moves from Wednesday to a Friday afternoon yep. and three out of five people show up because they had vacation plans. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we're, our dashboard is dirty. Like yes. we've not been, we've not been managing the stuff that's making us successful. That's right. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because I think what a lot of people get twisted. And again, this is like, I'm saying this more out of personal reminder than anything else is, uh, Oh, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we forget like, as an example, that in order for us to have the resources that we need to hire staff appropriately, uh, spend on overhead where appropriate to sustain this, these new workloads, these new work cases. What we forget is if we stop doing process, the process that protects our service delivery, our customer experience, our margins, our profit, right? Yeah. Our profit, our cash flow. Those are the things that we begin to skip. Uh, when we get sucked up by these sprints and inevitably what that means then is we're not going to have the resource. A, the work might not come again because we've tarnished our reputation or provided a poor customer experience. Yeah. So it's a one and done, yeah. right? So we exposed ourselves to all these potential referral relationships, partnerships, clients, and we crap the bed yeah. because we were so caught up in, in gathering more contracts versus providing quality. Yeah. Obviously there's downsides to that you're going to feel the pain in the near future, but then also it's like, if I don't have the money to put back into my business and support the growth, Mm. because I let margins slip because we weren't having our production meetings, I let stuff get chucked, choked up in pre-production, you know, it felt good that we had all this labor or all this, uh, contracted revenue on the board but we're not producing it right because Mm -hmm. we're letting those battle rhythms slip. So anyways, just a word of encouragement, like guys, those battle rhythms are mission critical, even more so the busier we get, because it ensures that we're still providing the level of service that protects our reputation. And we're still keeping enough money at the end of the day that we have something Mm -hmm. to reinvest into shoring up those areas that needs our support. Mm -hmm. Um, So again, it's just, it's very symbiotic, right? We just really no parts of our business. Um, are a silo and man again hats off to you if that's the position you're in because those are great problems uh, but careful have. not to crap the bed boy we don't don't we all have a whole unique visual here after the amber heard and johnny depp <laughs> thing so, it's like that term don't crap the bed right we all know what it means but boy is that come into vivid color for all of us here these last six superstars months. oh my goodness that. so yeah. you're not alone in your business uh Parent, have had hazards i guess <laughs> okay dude the camp that is uh not so excited. Yeah. Uh, it's been a slog. Yeah. It's been six months of uphill battle. Sure. And 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 people are kind of looking at the at the business so far this year, and they've been chasing a goal. Mm. Uh, revenue's not where they want it to be, maybe, or just their EBITDA is a, is atrocious. Something's happening, and they're not very motivated by what they've experienced so far. Mm. What would, what's kind of like the top of mind things that you would say oh. to somebody in those shoes? Well, 
you know, speaking from our own experience operating in the field and, and, uh, and also working with clients of all different company sizes, everybody, everybody has those seasons, you know, sometimes they come in the second half of the year and sometimes they come as a hard slog at the beginning. But I think most often when we're not hitting the reasonable targets that we set out for ourselves, in a lot of ways, the, the exercise is the same as if you're winning, right? It's, it's shoring up the other areas of your business and, and stepping back and saying, okay, what part of our system uh, is unhealthy at the moment, right? And, and building health back into that. Um, but oftentimes it's, it's lead gen, you know, it's a big, like, where are we pulling the business from? I mean, yeah. that's our, that's our first step in, in, um, in salvaging our year, right. It's figuring out what's our sales problem. Yeah. And, and when, when we have a client who comes to us, that's got a sales problem, um, you know, the very first thing we're looking at is first of all, what are their internal systems to produce the work? Because as somebody who's been in sales, um, B2B sales for more than 20 years, like you, you can certainly find those salespeople who can sell ice to Eskimos, you know, that whole, uh, stereotypical comment about salespeople. Yeah. Uh, those people are out there and like, they'll sell, they'll sell turds in a punch bowl to somebody who's willing to buy. Yeah. But, but the reality for most of us who are, uh, what I would consider principled salespeople, like we're putting our name and our own reputation out there mm -hmm. to rep a service brand. When there's, uh, when there's service delivery issues, there's morale issues in your company. Um, when there's leadership behaviors that are out of line, it is very hard for a principled sales executive to go out and rep that brand. Yeah. Um, with the same energy and, and gusto. Yeah and drive that, uh, that you would want them to, and that they would otherwise be willing to give. Yeah. So the, so the very first reflection point, I, I think if you're not where you're at in terms of your top line or bottom line goals or whatever other goals you may have laid out for yourself is what is the overall health of our, the operation of our business? Because that may very well be uh, holding your salespeople back or yeah. salesperson or you as the owner that's doing the sales. Mm -hmm. it, I, I think sometimes we don't even realize why we're so, we have so much call reluctance to get out in the field and meet with those property managers and senior, like, like to go after the business, even as an owner. Yeah. When you know your company is broke, like broken in terms of health and process and systems and stuff like that, even for you, it's hard to go out and sell. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I, I, I just, that's the first place to start. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. That's yeah. I think, I think that's a really interesting perspective. Um, I think you're right on there. I, I would encourage folks to, to, to say this is at some point you've got to stop looking backwards, mm -hmm. it, you know, and, and, and I think what happens is, is that we, we look in the rear view mirror at this time of year and we go, man, you know, we, we had a lot of misses. Okay. It, yeah. Yes, that that is true. There's nothing you can do to go backwards in time. Mm -hmm. So let's evaluate what essentially created those misses. So like if we had set out objectives for our business and we didn't hit them, what was the cause of that? So don't just look back in a woe is me, but let's look back cause and effect. Absolutely. Disconnect yourself personally from it reputationally and just look at the data mm. and say, well, what happened? Well, did we miss battle rhythms? Were we not meeting with the teams regularly? Was there no follow-up or, yeah. or measuring of these uh, goals that we set for ourselves? Was there was there a lack of, of resources to identify whether we were making progress or not making progress? Did we wait too long and look at everything in past versus mm. what change can we modify now to have a positive effect tomorrow? Yeah. And I would just say, once you're done doing that evaluation, identify the kinds of activities and behaviors mm. that your team has to commit to, to make the next six months as productive as possible. Mm -hmm. And there's times where we see businesses that are able to make up for losses from the first part of the year. Like it goes so well that they still end up at the same finish line they were anticipating because they identify what slowed them down and they go whole hog into fixing those, those problems. Oh, right? dude, we, we had that. I mean, if anything, 
that, that was maybe more our MO because we were so committed to being good, you yeah. know? So we'd have, we'd, we'd have kind of a slow rolling start and, and that the lack of hitting our goals was so motivational yeah. to us. Right. Yeah. That, and, and I think there's a lot of people like that. Yeah. The, the other, um, I, I would just offer too. I think one of the best ways to get a grip on what's happening in your business or not happening, if you're not exactly where you want is to rededicate yourself to grabbing time out in the field mm -hmm. as an owner yeah, or a GM key leader, key yeah. leader, you're a key leader, you know, and that's the thing is whether you've, whether you had a bang up year so far in terms of top line or whatever stuff you're measuring or you're behind goal or you're disappointed in your current results, right? It's a great, kind of pause break to say, okay, am I really in touch with what's happening in the field here? Yeah. Because man, like I, I remember you took me out. We, we did a ride along when I first came onto the company, you took me around, we visited some job sites, did some QA visits and you have a standard as, as the key leader um, that I think unless you're inspecting that standard, it's so easy for that standard just to droop yeah. And slump. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and so getting out of the field helps you see things the way they really are. Yeah. Um, both in terms of how your employees are doing individually, yep. but then how, where are our standards at from where we were when owners started the business before we ever had a GM, like what was my standard when I was showing up to a job site? What did I feel like was our differentiators that we were bringing to our customer yeah. Is that stuff still real? Yeah. Or is it just something that we talk about, but we miss by 5% or 10 or 15 yeah. or 20%? No, right on. Yeah. You know, because ultimately that bleeds into the other things. Again, that's reputation. It's getting the next referral. It's the happy client that tells somebody it's the five-star reviews, it's all of that. It's all those things. Yeah. I, I think you're right on point. I, I think that the piece here for folks is, is that it's um, we kind of run into a principal issue where it's like, for instance, let's say for, uh, you know, a, uh, my mitigation team, we're struggling. We're not hitting, you know, margins as a department. Uh, maybe uh, dry times have started to extend beyond where we can support it and get paid appropriately, right? Like there's all these yeah. little things that might begin to pop up. And I think as a, as a GM or a business owner, you're like, I hired a department head for a reason, mm. right? To share that load. And they are ultimately from a performance perspective responsible for that outcome. Mm. But I think what can happen is when we, when we do a review and we find out things are not going the way that we want, and instead of stepping in and taking, like, I feel like people fall into two camps. They voice their frustration they, they are aggravated. They do some threatening. They bitch about it to friends and peers, right? Or the other camp is they, they get in and they start doing themselves. They, they, they show that they've lost trust. Then they divert all their attention away from these long-term spaces that you should be in strategically as a leader. And they start doing, fixing, being the answer to this department mm. issue. And I would just suggest that there's a place in the middle that's probably the right move. Mm. And, and what I mean by that is we sit down with our key leader, we evaluate the performance in very black and white terms, and we express the fact that we are frustrated and that we are nowhere near where we anticipated being. Mm -hmm. But then instead of chastising and, and staying in this mode of fix it, or I'm going to kill you, fix it, I'm going to fire you thing is... Now let's get engaged, kind of like what you're talking about with getting out in the field is partner yeah. with that department head for a while. Yeah. Ask questions, go out into the field together, assess where the problems are, where the challenges are, how did we get caught off guard yeah. and partner in finding resolutions to those things instead of, again, falling in one of those two camps. Because if we take over and begin to micromanage, we're not equipping that leader to make any gains professionally. Yeah. They'll never be capable of owning the role like we want them to if we take over. Yeah. If we don't sit down and partner with them and we just do that, I'm going to bitch to everybody else but the person. Yeah you're again, you're not equipping them to make change. You're just going to continue to bleed on a salary of somebody that's not equipped yet to do the job at the capacity they need to. And so again, I just encourage people like we even talked about this with problem solving. Sometimes AR would climb way out of control and I could get all pissed and principled about it and not reward team members for making gains or all those things. But we've always encouraged people, let's get a win. 
Like yeah. who cares? Put your pride down. Yeah. What is it going to take to get a win? Well, my team's tired too. Let's motivate them. Even though it's their job in quotes, let's give them motivation to tackle this problem. Yeah. I think we need to treat our, our, our issues, our production issues the same way when we, when we're missing Mark, when yeah. we're, when we're not hitting the goals that we've set for ourselves. Yeah. Questions like, you know, what do you feel like would need to happen? What would need to change about your day-to-day schedule? What would need to have, what, what would you need in terms of resources to turn a corner here? Yes. Right. What do you think needs to happen within our team? Yes. For us to salvage our goal for the, with, with the remainder of the year. Right. You know, what resources do you think you would need to get the gross profit margin up to here? Yeah. In your mind? Yeah. What, what do you think the team is lacking that maybe has, you know, contributed to us coming in under goal, you know, that, those kind of questions. And, and ultimately a lot of times people know the answers, Yeah, you know, and and then every now and then you have kind of a bad apple or somebody that's, that just refuses to reflect and, and shift gears, you know, and they want to instead transfer blame and all that kind of stuff. And then you get those people off the team, but most people want to do well, you know? Yeah. Most people, they're embarrassed when they don't hit Mark, you know? Yeah. There's guilt. There's shame. There's all the things associated with it. Yeah. No, I think that's right on. I think the, the other thing that I would encourage people is if we've missed so far this year, just adopt the discipline of consistent inspecting of what we expect. Yeah. That's not a saying I made up. In fact, I think it was a, a franchise owner in our market that I met early, early on in my restoration career that made a comment like that. I just remember how it just stuck to me of, of when I started to see system problems, it was normally because I had stopped inspecting mm. what I expected. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I, I'm an optimist. So it's like, Hey, we had a great conversation and set the stage for expectations. You, you do it now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that we see that happen. Mm. We, we see business leaders get disconnected from inspecting what we expect. And that's how we look back on a quarter or a half of a year and realize, Oh man, that sucked. Yeah. And, and so I would just encourage people moving forward. Um, and there's a lot of overlap, right. Between these two camps, but I would just say moving forward, you've got to adopt that and prioritize that, that battle rhythm mm. mentality of I'm going to be consistent in production meetings. We are going to be consistent in quarterly, uh, you know, all company meetings and raw, raw sessions. We're going to be consistent in these day-to-day uh, battle rhythms, because when I am, it helps me prevent us from missing the mark yeah. because we see it earlier and we can still do something proactive to affect change. Yeah. Whereas once you start looking in the rear view mirror, you're kind of, you're hosed. There's like, there's not a lot that you can do to affect change at that point. So again, and, and I, I want to say this with positivity, sure. Like guys, you got a whole six months to turn things around. Yeah. To, to grind hard, to, to affect very positive change. And if it doesn't get to the finish line that you anticipated, you can still be excited about the fact that you adopted behaviors, systems, process, priorities that showed you that you could make gains over yeah. the next six months. So even if you miss the mark at the end of the year, because the first six months was so uh, such a bummer, Show yourself and your team that when you guys commit to something, you can affect positive change in your business and use that to roll right into 2023 with a ton of momentum. Yeah. Right. I I think we'd be remiss if we didn't circle back and talk a little bit more about sales though, you know, because so much like the ground is shifting in our industry when it comes to sales and, and really probably all the entire home services sector and, and the services sector, like how people buy. Uh, how much noise there is in the market. And, and then just some of the fundamental changes that have happened in our industry with TPAs and with centralization of claims units and just like the rewriting of claims policy and how claims are handled and adjudicated in our industry. It's like, it's, it's really affected us. It's affected our ability to sell. Yeah. And, and I think many of us are still to one degree or another stuck in this promotional sales behavior where we have little or no leadership over the sales process. We're really just waving our flag. Yeah. We're, we're dropping in, we're filling candy jars. We're putting, you know, smiley, enthusiastic, attractive people out in the field, you know, talking to people, knocking on doors, but we're, we're really just promoting ourselves rather than selling. And so if you're behind goal, 
you know, from a top line perspective or, um, right. You're just not where you want to be. That's something to consider is how are we selling? Are we relying on our old strategies that for years and years made the phone ring and now it's not, I think taking a really open-minded view of, do we need to shift the way we're thinking and approaching our sales? Yeah. Because I think we all intuitively know that the candy and smiles route routine yeah. of, of just doing this, um, this raw, raw kind of approach, um, it is not creating the same results that it used to. Yeah. It was no, no doubt. It was very effective. It was the only way that any of us were really playing right. to a large degree. But I think all of us have noticed and, and for some of us, it snuck up on us Yeah, with the old ways we've continued to invest in it, but maybe we haven't been monitoring our, our sales and the breakdown of our sales to realize, Hey, Holy cow, we used to generate two and a half million from agents. And last year, boy, now that we look at it, it was only 1.6. Yeah. But you know, we get some business from other, you know, sources and that it just kind of covers up what's really happening. Yeah. Instead of adding two, we just fill the hole. Exactly. We yeah. just, we just robbed Peter to pay Paul. Yeah. Right. And so I, I think it's really important as companies, as we continue to move uh, forward in the industry. And I sound like a broken record because you guys see this a lot from floodlight. It is so important that we tap into what's real about our customer situation, understanding yeah. curiosity. Yeah. What has their experience been with restoration in the past rather than just banging our drum? Yeah. Instead it's asking them, it's asking them to bang their drum. Tell me about what you got going on. Tell yeah. me how, tell me what you like, don't like about restoration. Tell me about your last damage event. What went well in that process and what would you have changed, yep. right? What made that experience difficult for you and your operations team going through that whole thing with XYZ Restoration Company? Yeah. Understanding our customer's situation and their past experience with our industry and frankly, even just services, you yeah. know, um, is so important. Yeah. And I think you've got to follow that with a willingness to adapt operations to meet those needs. Yeah. Like once you know uh, what, what the situation requires, you're going to have to make some changes. And I'm grab that window. We got a little landscaping visit yeah, happening at, uh, let me uh, hit that here at floodlight world headquarters here. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's true. Right. And this all fits together. And that's something that we drill on a ton with, with our clients. And when we're, you know, speaking and doing stuff and you hear it, those of you that listen to our podcast, right. It's all fits together. Right. So we talk about like one of the activities we do with our clients is the pain solution table. And, you know, at first when we introduce it, it's all about the sales side of it. It's, it's, it's okay. What are the most common pain points that our clients are experiencing? We've encountered and we all intuitively know a lot of these. If you've been in the industry for more than a minute, we know where we fall down, right? But then the other side of that activity is creating these systems and processes and concrete solutions to that pain. Like That's our whole business yeah. is knowing what our customer's pain is and then building our business yeah. around the solutions to that pain. That's how we win. Right. That's how we win. And it looks different for every business, right? Like for the Bell 4s and ATIs and... and First on sites, a big, a big problem they're addressing, a big pain point is scale. Yeah. And and so they figured out scale. Like yeah. they know how to operate at a national, you know, international level. And and for them, that's a massive problem they solve for some clients. Yeah. Well, you we we all need to know what is it that we're solving for yeah. and how. Yeah. So anyway. No, and I think that that's a real tactical way for people to affect the next six months. Yeah. So again, if you're sitting in this position where you're just, you're not hitting the goals, you're not, you're not making the progress that you anticipated, let's do a deep dive into, you know, I say, let's, you need to do a deep dive in, into your sales process. What are you doing? Are you repeating things that you've always done? Yeah. There could lie uh, the problem. And so uh, I'd say maybe to wrap up that idea is be decisive. Yeah. Like, don't get caught up in the frustration, the, the pity, right? The, sure. That trough of sorrows, which a lot of us do, man, the, the, the medicating, the I'm, I'm hitting, you know, three IPAs when I get home because I'm just so frustrated with my business. Now's the time to man or woman up and mm -hmm. affect the next six months. So I just, I would say, be decisive like yeah. where, where you see issues, where you find that the problem uh, existed and how it prevented you from succeeding this first six months, get aggressive, be decisive, be open-minded too. Like, and, and I think the ego thing, right, oh, man, it's really hard. 
not to admit defeat, but I think it's when you're the one driving the vision and the strategy, it's hard. Like it can feel really hard to just have that, um, come to Jesus meeting, so to speak with yourself and your key leaders, because part of the process is maybe admitting, I think I, I think I misdirected us. I think I, I, I missed the mark. Yeah. Like, I think the plan we laid out, here's where I think it was flawed. Yeah. Uh, and that was me, like the owner, the GM, whatever there's, there is a piece of that. Yeah. And there's a piece that also really creates, builds a lot of confidence with your team. Like there is nothing. Oh my gosh. When you're willing to humble yourself as the key leader and say, you know what? I think I sent us down the wrong path this first part of the year. And here's where I think we need to go instead. Yeah. Oh my gosh. The trust that's built. Yeah. The Uh, trust in the esprit de corps and like, you know, people's willingness to follow you for the second half and really grind on it to, to save the day is so much greater when the owner says, you know what, guys, here's where I think I I led us in the wrong direction so far this year. Here's where I think I failed to, you know, equip you guys for the stuff that I was asking you to do. I I don't think I I put the resources in that you guys needed to actually be able to do this. So listen, uh, we all probably have ways we can, we can be better. Here are some of those things. Let's talk about it. What needs to change? Yeah. I want your input. Yep. Man. And it's positive. Again, it's totally positive. It's a positive thing. I think we we can struggle with assessment hmm. and after action reviews as they are intended to be something negative. And the reality of it is, is that game changers make gains yeah. because they're willing to assess their existing performance and adapt changes to make it better. Honestly, tomorrow. yeah. Honestly, just get right? get at the truth. Yeah, totally. It's like that's how we sell. We want to know the customer's truth. We don't ever want to sell against truth, right? They have a service provider that they love. Great. They're not a hot prospect right now. And likewise, get to the truth of what's happening in your business. Figure out what's real. Yeah. Not what we say about ourselves, not what we think should be. Like, where are we at? And then how do we get from here, you know, to the next thing? Right on, dude. Okay, Okay. guys, listen, you're six months in. Some of you are happy as a lark and where you're at. Kudos to you. Evaluate your team. Shore up the missing parts to keep up with that growth. Make sure it's a healthy trajectory that you're on, not just one adding top line. Uh, If you're behind the power curve, guys, it's okay. Mm. You got six more months to adapt change. Uh, You can do it. Okay. Stay motivated. Stay in the trench. Keep the pedal down. There's lots of opportunities in front of us Mm. to ensure that 2022 ends and a strong note. And we go into 23 excited about our business. So hang in there. Good luck. We'll see you next time. All right, everybody. Hey, thanks for joining us for another episode of Head, Heart and Boots. And if you're enjoying the show, or you love this episode, please hit subscribe, write us a review, or share this episode with a friend. Share it on LinkedIn, share it via text, whatever. It all helps. Thanks for listening.